it's like intru not intrusive process, uh, non intrusive. Can't think of the word now. <laughs> Yo, yo, welcome to the Elite Table Talk where we unpack health professionals, business owners, entrepreneurs, and just everyday people and looking at their lifestyle, their mindset, their routines, and we see what they have done to help them move forward and really just get more time back in the day. You know, most people say there's 24 hours in the day, but there's really 16 because we sleep for eight. But how do we get the most of those 16? So grab a pen, get some paper, let's make some notes. Let's see what we can get from this episode today. Let's go. <laughs> yes, and this is episode two with Josh. Yes, we stutter, we stall, yeah. we hesitate. Non-intrusive probing. There we go. Would you call that a good, a better, or best approach? Um, no, best. People don't even realize you're just sucking everything good out of them, and you know you can leverage it for yourself and just make them feel like they're the center of the stage. Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't feel like you're the center of the stage, then this episode is for you. So we've got Josh Bus with us, not busty, not busy, though he does get busy and gets down to business when we talk business, but also epigenetics. So a common phrase that a lot of us think is we want to be the best, but we just don't know how. And Josh has well, learned, but also optimized, because a lot of systems, a process where it's good, better, best. Because sometimes, uh, me personally, will procrastinate till it's perfect and continue to work on the same thing a year later it's almost done where really if i had just gone it's good for now put it out there let the universe tell me what's going on and then adjust and provide the feedback and improve it so it gets better and better until it is the best of the best um so yeah we're here to get josh tell to us about epigenetics something that he really enjoys and we can geek out over this and case study and challenge him and see if we can get some aha moments so Josh, epigenetics, what is it? <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. I had someone reach out and say, you can't be an epigenetics coach. It's like, it doesn't make sense. So just to put it in reference, like- Do you just hold an EpiPen? Is that what you do? And you're like, <laughs> Exactly, okay. come at me. Um, epigenetics is the study of how the environment influences your gene reaction. So essentially it's a lifestyle coach. It just sounds better to say epigenetics coach. Um, sounds more scientific, you know, but <laughs> it really- Sounds better. It does sound better if you got to use that because um, people will think lifestyle coach and it's like it still seems a bit woo woo like the things we'll talk about you like what the hell. Um, Do you get results? Constantly like so I am blown could away. Could you be like a lifestyle epigenetics performance results coach? Coach coach? That's so many words. I know but it just sounds <laughs> better right? Short, shorter syllables. <laughs> um, yeah definitely. Uh, Performance is the area I want to move into for sure. And I did um, a little article for a magazine recently, uh, which is exciting. But because who we work with is just general pop, which is fine. Like I love people. It's 95% of the population probably, maybe more. Magazines, yes. Yeah, so it's a great target to work with and just to help the environment community feel better. But yeah, epigenetic study, it's like understanding what levers we can pull to help you become your best self. So, you How, what are these levers you speak of? Yep. So there's definitely different ones. There's uh, physical health, there's psychosocial health, and then there's mental, there's emotional health and environmental health. So yep. when you break them down into different categories, physical health is like um, helping them eat the right foods for them. It turns out there is food uniquely good for us at certain times of our life, as well as depending on where your health sits. Mm. Dive into that a little bit. There was a client I had, she's probably 30 kilos overweight or so. Um, when she started, we looked at a food, the list was very aggressive. It had no meat, um, but it also said, don't eat broccoli. And I was like, what's going on here? Broccoli is a superfood. We should eat it. Um, she didn't, she did really well. She followed the program down 10 kilos in about, I think it was eight weeks or so. So healthy weight loss and consistent. Or and then you didn't eat broccoli? No, but the interesting fact is now after we redid a measurement, she can eat broccoli again after that 10 kilo loss. So there was obviously something to do with the broccoli and where her health state was that wasn't going to help her on her journey as much still probably could have had it it just said avoid for now rewind let's start from the beginning josh yep. epigenetics is pulling on leaders physical health interesting tell me more so if i weigh 30 kilos overweight i shouldn't be eating broccoli and meat not you that specific individual 
So because I'm a special snowflake, got it. Special yeah. snowflake, definitely. Yeah. Um, what we do is we do this epigenetic testing to help understand what's happened to your body. With that, um, through all the information and the years of research, they can say your phenotype, which is the body shape that you have right now, and certain conditions, maybe it's skin color, eyes, um, type of hair you have, all these genetic uh, things that they can mark, they can track it back in history to see what's happened through your life. And through understanding this, they can understand what influences certain reactions in your body. And I guess food is just information. So at the right time, giving the right information is really important. How do we do these tests? Uh, tests Especially will, when they don't have hair. And that's probably one of the questions, right? It's like, uh, what is the state of your hair? Gray, falling out, whatever. And then it can understand what genes that you necessarily have. So it's a process we put people through. It takes like 17 to 19 measurements, things like your jawline, um, your neck circumference. Yes, very different. Um, your, the size of your knee, the size of your elbow, the size of your wrist, uh, hand length, palm length. So these uh, are these are broccoli elbows and jaw lines. Okay, got it. I think you'll be right. I think you have a bit of broccoli. Have a bit. Yeah. But not more than a hundred grams, or you'll die. So interesting. It's not in terms of grams they talk because. Oh, okay. It's it's not, it's not like hyper precise. You can still get away with being like relatively good with it, um, but it will tell you like suggested amounts in terms of how many times a month for certain things. Mm. Hmm. And then, yeah, the other questions are like, what's your skin color? What's your eye color? Do you have any um, illnesses or any diseases or what's going on with your body at the moment? And so this is just a detailed questionnaire that you work through that gives you up. Because from what you've got, there's what, eight variables? Like a uh, In terms of health types, uh, yeah. there's six. But in terms of actual differential people, there's 360 because it sits on a circle. So when they started out, it would have been like that. They were teaching health and medical professionals. Uh, but teaching it to us general folk, fitness trainers, um, 360 different types of people to work with is very difficult. 360. Yeah. So they call them bio trends. Um, so what they've managed to do is they've found great commonality between the different health types. And we can use that as a perfect starting platform to integrate things to begin with. And then we can leverage the AI technology to more precise as we update it and then use that information in there to make sure we're working on the individual, not just the health type. Can you give us an example? So, which is like, mm -hmm. you had this lady come in, yep. looked at her hair, her jaw, her elbow, her knee, entered in the information and it's just gone. This is the suggestion. So like, she, let's say she eats meat twice a day. You know, she'd have chicken and veg because that's what, Bodybuilders, bodybuilders do, yeah. you know, yeah. and they look shredded and like they've lost a lot of weight. I'd like to look like that. And you go, from what I'm actually seeing based off these answers in the test, this is the list of foods that we don't agree with your body right now. Yep, exactly that. So you get a food list, it'll say um, eat more of, eat less of, avoid sort of thing. Uh, there's okay and sometimes food, which are kind of neutral as well. Because uh, it is very overwhelming and giving people strict food rules, I just find like, I give them a good, better, best outline for it. Hey, if you want to do good, just avoid as often as possible your avoid foods. If you want to do better, try your best Monday to Friday to eat like mainly excellent foods. And then if you want to be best, well, yeah, just follow the list as is. Follow the list with for every day that ends in day. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, 100%. Um, on the day that's not a day, Mix it up. Have a rest. <laughs> but yeah, and then you just really, you just help them realize like that progress over perfection, you fall off track. We use bounce back ability as a mindset term to, hey, bounce back on track as soon as possible um, if something didn't go to plan. Yeah, well, what got you into epigenetics? Uh, so working with certain types of people for so long. So I realized that, hey, broccoli and chicken didn't work for everyone. And discipline wasn't the only factor holding people back. So I was like helping these people not seeing improvements. And then um, I went through the process myself. Someone presented epigenetics to Dan's group and not in the form of health and fitness, more in terms of mind and mindset and things like that. And I was like, hey, there's pretty cool applications here. So I did the course. And one of the things that really got me at the start was there was an indication like a pie graph of non-responders. So the exercise one was like, hey, there's actually people who don't respond to hit exercise. It was 33% of people or 30 to 40% of people, which is a huge majority of people, right? And I was like, shit, imagine if I've been telling people to do 
boot camp 6 a.m. and it's actually making them worse. So a bit of self-reflection, jumped in the course, learned some stuff, incorporated it with a couple of clients. And I was like, this is going to be too overwhelming. I can't even get people to eat like, you know, three fifths full of veg or can't get them to drink two liters of water for more than four weeks in a row. How am I going to get them to be so precise? Mm. So I let it go for a while. And then that's kind of when Good Better Best initially appeared to me. I'd ran some challenges around that in terms of like, these are good habits. We're never going to do challenges around good, better or best. Better was like four serves of veg, um, men, uh, protein was four serves for women, six serves for men. And then training or moving your body 45 minutes each day. And I ran a challenge probably multiple times every year. I think it was three or four times. I realized most people can't struggle to keep their habits beyond 21 days. But then there was also people who did everything and didn't respond. I trusted these people too. Like they were really giving it a go. And this lady, she was starting to reduce her session, the broccoli lady, she was reducing her sessions and she's just like less engaged. And I was like, I have to try something different. So reintroduced epigenetics, did it as a coaching thing. And I think we had 15 people to start and I was blown away at the reception of it. Um, I think because it gives people a identity you're this health type. And then when you can associate with it and see evidence of it, you're more likely to listen to it versus someone saying, Hey, eat chicken and broccoli because this guy gets amazing results from it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Well, it's more tailored to each individual based off the set list of questions. Yeah. And that whole conversation around discipline changes because it just feels right for them, which I thought would be weird, like going from meat eating, which my health type can, uh, to these people that were smashing meat that shouldn't necessarily, and then telling to eat more plant-based. I thought that would be a huge obstacle. And after two weeks, 21 mm. days, they were like, I actually feel fantastic. I can't believe um, that that makes such a big difference. You know, with all the information that's out there, it's like ch chicken and broccoli, like it gets a big beating, but you know, it works. Chicken and broccoli, <laughs> for most people. Yeah, it, it works. Yeah. So, you know, you can pick like, ah, it's boring, season it, like game changer. So, when you're working with these people in epigenetics, I guess, when is the right time for someone? Because, you know, someone who's eating chicken and broccoli probably right now listening, they're dropping the weight, they're feeling good. Like, you know, you don't, like, you don't know what optimal is until you've had optimal, right? So you're like, oh, well, I'm dropping weight because that's my goal and I'm cognitively alert. But what are the signs for someone to go, I should probably look into it, like, you know, like, because mm. <laughs> I need oxygen, right? But if that's that might be something that's underlying, that's like, well, actually, your eight hours of sleep, your body actually needs nine based off this testing. How would how would someone whose things are going well not really thinking about better? Yep. So uh, that is the problem we kind of face with people I've introduced it to who are more mesomorphic. So the typical health and fitness information is completely relative to them because that's what the fitness space is optimized for. They saw these people get incredible results because of their, their body shape, how it changed, how they adapted to the food, and it aligned with them. The issue is for the people that it didn't, and they've been forced to try to put like a square peg in a round hole sort of thing. And this information is just holding them back. So it's definitely easier for people who aren't seeing progress but then the people who could optimize, I think it's just awareness and willingness to be open-minded. If they don't have that, you've got no chance. Um, but yeah, just thinking like the cool thing with most of those people, if they're moving in that direction, they're usually, what can I do to be better? So it's usually when people hit like more of a obstacle that it's, they're going to realize like, oh, I need that. So pretty much. If you're someone who's yo-yo dieting, you're going up and down, you're seeing your weight fluctuate and you really just want to know how to fix it, then this is for you. Yeah, but it's so much more than that, unfortunately. It's just a great um, pain point entry point. Uh, the applications are universal, like family, relationships, business, um, personal development. I think personal growth is like looking inwards, right? And if you have a blueprint to look inwards that can tell you how your mind actually operates based on your hormones, it's just, I had a lady last night. She's like, I just feel okay being myself. And I never felt that way. She's like, wrong. You must yeah. be fixed. 
Well, she just thought her overactive mind was an issue, um, but it turns out for that health part, they're very analytical and it is really important for them to be that way so that they can, you know, process things and focus on things effectively. It's just when they don't focus on the right things, it just doesn't help them. So is your archetype Data driven spreadsheet oriented. <laughs> yeah, so I'm actually an outlier for the way things look. I even met the head educator, <laughs> and he's like, "Geez, you're a big crusader," um, which is like an ecto meso, because I actually have cropped over into the endomorph as well, and that's where that unique snowflake sort of thing comes in. And you can find in your profile, so like, there's like generic information around the health types, and it's usually rather correct. But when you dive into the more precise information on the app, then you're like, oh, I found crossovers from different health types. And it's able to tell that based on the genes that it understands from the tests you've done and things like that. Can you elaborate more? Obviously, in your own experience. There's, there's plenty of ways it can work. So the circle's 360 degrees, as we said, but everyone's going to have underlying behaviors based on hormones that have been, um, it's like you're more responsive to those hormones throughout your life. So everyone still has the hormones that we we're human, you know, we share a lot of them, but what? just pre predisposition. Surprisingly. Yeah. So you'll notice some people are just super lean, super muscular, right? And you'll they be are like machines. Yeah. Absolute machines, yeah. <laughs> Terminator. And other people just will never get that way. But when we look in the back of the profile, sorry, it's like you could have a guardian person that actually has an underlying like diplomat trait, which sits close on the circle. Probably, um, probably to rewind, what can you just take us through those? You're saying guardians, crusaders. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So with that, sorry, um, how the health types work based on your phenotype and the process you go through, it's able to spit out information. Phenotype. Oh, I said it earlier. So the phenotype was like the shape of your body, right? So you take those measurements, the musculoskeletal ones, as well as things like. The questions you answer are still your phenotype as well. So anything that can change over time in regards to your body. Once it understands these ratios and these questions, it then helps you understand which health type you are. And it kind of, it's relative to mesomorph, ectomorph, endomorph. Yep. So with that, the circle, it's like six different things. If we start with a mesomorph, it's activator health type. So activator is that typical fitness industry, very muscular, just high energy, uh, can be a lot for some people. And then the next one across is a connector. So your connector is more meso and endomorph. They're usually shorter, more stout. They can put on muscle really easy. Uh, that health type is really like has strength, but also the energy. And these are typically known as like your friends that talk out loud a lot and like really need to process things out loud. Then you have your guardians, which are the more that endomorphic type. So those bigger, thicker frames, um, they're, predominantly their hormone that supports them is like insulin and prolactin. So they're very nurturing people. They have the longest digestive systems. That's why the endomorphs, um, they mainly develop the endom endomorphic germ layer, which is responsible for digestive tissues and stuff like that. Then you have your diplomat, which is slightly endomorph and ectomorph. So they get some of the crossover from that sort of neural as well as the endomorphic. And they tend to be your taller humans um and thicker humans that just like are really thoughtful and stuff we come around to the bottom you got your senses they're more ectomorphic uh in that that usually leaner skinnier sort of that nerdy sort of archetype they're very good at following systems and processes and very data driven as well and then the last one which i am is the crusader so it has that crossover of the ectomorph and the mesomorph don't tend to put on like that that good looking lean muscle as much but can still you know be very effective they're very dopamine driven and it ties in with that sort of neural part from the ectomorph as well so phenotype into the they're called archetypes health types health types yep. and then from there you're now explaining yourself mm -hmm. so through all these questions you now know your health type which then there's more questions which would spit out information for food nutrition training relationships you know does it go as deep as telling you how often you should have sex on a monthly basis? No, but you'd like, understand that the ones that are more mesomorphic and more higher in testosterone, because um, that's kind of their predisposition, they're going to be the ones that are typically going to want it more. Um, yeah. Could, because um, just like using sex as an example, because that is, you know, a lot of people like, 
yeah, I do it all the time. But, you know, as you're saying, someone with testosterone would naturally have a heightened state for that, so they probably would do it more. Though, if you're having another type who probably wouldn't have those hormones as heightened, they're doing it more because obviously that might be the normality of the groups that they hang out with, but it's actually, yeah, I feel good now, but in the long term, it actually might have a hindrance to them because it's not congruent with what you've got in the epigenetic world. It'd be the lens you could look at it is everyone could still be tailored that way, but the reason why would be different. So the testosterone would be like sort of that dominance, that aggression, that, um, you know, sort of challenge sort of theme. And then if you look around to, I guess, Crusader, dopamine, it would be that reward system. When you look at sensors, for them, they're more uh, more monogamous and just more connection-based, but they also need to feel really safe. So for them to be in a state where they feel like doing it as often, you would be thinking about that. And then um, diplomats would somewhat be the same, more connection-based, and guardians would be yeah, connection-based as well. So if really, if we're noticing someone who's on the other side, which is like, Eh, like so as you're saying the pain point it's really finding this is helping you break down you know, the food the relations to find out what is going to support them and nurturing their health state so they can achieve optimal in those areas yeah yeah definitely understanding the mechanisms um practically through the hormone drivers um when you can understand like for females that time of the month they act differently um typically and then, <laughs> and that's like a, or even someone that's like a steroid blast or whatever, you know, you know, they act more aggressive. Steroid blast. So when we understand these things and we can say, hey, you know what? Hormones, which is neurobiology actually plays a part in your behaviors. Yeah. Yeah. And so through the studies and um, they have a really good head educator. She's a psychologist and she's been using the system for yeah, the last 15 years. She won't treat anyone without it because she can understand their base drivers uh, to help them navigate the situations more effectively. That's pretty strong. I won't work with anyone unless you use it. When you're doing epigenetics, are you always similar to like training? You're using movement every day to assess and evaluate, adjust someone. Are you every week seeing the same people and reevaluating their assessments, or how often does that happen? Yeah, I've tried various approaches and depends how they've signed up. Like if it's in a group setting, it's a little bit different to a one on one. Uh, essentially, it, it, it honestly feels so weird. Like I said, I said to another coach the other day, I feel like I'm not coaching people because the obstacles seem to just melt away. Because when people understand themselves better, they can navigate their obstacles better. Um, there's a, are you familiar with whoop, whoop framework for setting goals? Nope. That's so like wish, obstacle, out, um, wish, outcome, obstacle, and plan. It's meant to be one of the best scientifically proven goal setting systems because it helps you become aware of your obstacles prior to just saying, I'm gonna drink two liters of water a day for seven days. It's like, you can logically map out these things and for the right hand side of the circle, for them, uh, we're more so diplomats, which are the endomorph, ectomorphs, they're very negative bias and that's a large portion of our population. For them to foresee the future with a negative tone but understand they can plan and overcome it, then they can be like, okay, cool, we can move forward. And then understanding their underlying nature or their behaviors, I typically would end up doing this when I'm told to do this. Okay, well, how do we overcome that? And for them to see that written out and be like, oh, yeah, these are always been my problems. It just becomes an easier path through. Let's re-elaborate on that. So whoop is wish, hope, outcome, plan. Wish, uh, so W-O-O-P. So wish, outcome, obstacle, plan. Outcome is like, what are you going to feel for achieving it? So sometimes people can't really take action unless they feel like what the outcome is going to be. And then you look at the obstacles that they've run into and they might say, these are the things that commonly happen to me and you plan to help them move forward from it. Yep. So an if then plan, if this occurs, um, then I'll plan to do this. I typically find one to two extra if then plans really help. Do you integrate this with ThinkFit at all or is it more just a value add? On challenges we do, but yeah, in epigenetics, we do it the fifth week as a reset. Um, so as part of the eight week course, fifth week, kind of a reset, you've learned a lot of information. Let's integrate this um, and see where you want to head with it. Any main takeaways in the program that you've learned? Like, you know, there's always so much information that people can learn, but what was the appeal for you here? Like, what was your pain point that led you to this? To learning about epigenetics? Um, just wondering to help people on like, our goal was to help people define fitness for themselves. Like 
everyone's so busy comparing to other people and trying to do what other people got results with. Whereas this is like, no, this is unique to you. This helps you understand your motivators. It helps you understand your obstacles. Just the success I've seen from it, it just made, yeah, it's made so much sense. So we've had no broccoli, lose weight. <laughs> yep. Um, when you looked at that, were you like, no, nah, that can't be it? Oh, so bad. Like I've done precision nutrition level one. I've been incorporating it for years. I was headbutting that whole protein idea. Like they're still meant to eat protein, but more so meat based for that health part. So many, a little two years to integrate this. I learned about it and then I was fighting it for two years and I was like, nah, there has to be a better way. And it was this. Yeah. Wow. So she needed to stop eating meat, stop eating broccoli. And you're like, the amino acidemia. <laughs> no, she needs it. So there's another lady, right? In my second intake and the whole year before I'm like, you're just not eating enough meat. Like your protein's so low. It's shocking. It was actually making her feel worse, but we wouldn't know that because we get told so often to make people eat more protein and reduce the other things to see improvements. And then I remember it was like the fourth week we're in the middle of a session downstairs training and she goes, Josh, I can't believe you told me to eat more protein, more meat. Rah, rah. And I was like, well, now I know better and I'm teaching you better. And she just stopped <laughs> and she's like, thank you. That is an acceptable answer. I will accept your crusading effort. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and she feels fantastic. Right. And I thought she's a, she's a guardian health type as well. And she is super active. So she goes to the gym herself. She also teaches cycle like eight times a week, but she was never losing weight. Right. And then to integrate this, to reduce the pressure on her digestive system, she has more energy. She's pumping out these sessions. Her body's feeling better. Her shape's changing. Like from, yeah, it's insane. Have you reassessed her eventually? And it's like, ah, oh, so we can eat meat now. <laughs> she actually feels sick eating meat now, which I felt bad for. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not everyone's had that response in terms of like gagging, but every other guardian that's gone back to trying to eat uh, more meat, they just feel so heavy and they end up stopping it anyway. So there's like this neurological response understanding, hey, I actually don't feel good eating these things and a better level of awareness around their body. What about um, like shakes, protein shakes for them? Um, it's still on the like natural food is always going to be the champion, but if they're desperate for it, yeah, I don't see why it couldn't be an issue. Just try and get one that's aligned closer to the things that they're allowed to eat. So more like, so you would just be looking at plant-based shakes? Well, I don't think, I th uh, like, I think it's more of a digestive issue than the fact it's actually meat because the breakdown process is a lot longer and they already have like a long digestive process. What if they blend the meat in a shake? It, so might, it might work, I don't know. But it's it's more so to do with the mechanism of digestion. So yeah, it could work. So the idea, because obviously it takes longer to break down, longer GI tract, so there's more, um, what is it? there's a high probability of gut dysbiosis, sits there, ferments, and it's just... Yeah, yeah, a lot of gut issues. Typically uh, with our diplomat clients, the next endomorph one around, uh, they're, they're so happy with the improvements in their gut. Uh, that's like the biggest compliment I've gotten so far from diplomats. You've got the lady who's the, the psychologist and she's like, you, I won't work with you unless you do the testing. Mm -hmm. Is is the testing just online or how does someone get access to that? Yeah, I mean, you can buy Shay and just do it. Like I said, it's very confronting having all this information in front of you. So Shay's the AI app. And um, I think it's like 197 USD or something for access. Shay. Uh, S-H-A-E. And yeah, you just go through, you do the process yourself. But I have found everyone I've just given the opportunity to do it has like, you need, you need a level of buy-in. Uh, wellness is like the corporate one. It's, I think it's just Shay by itself because I have Shay Fitness for gyms as well, uh, which is more like integrating a whole gym into it. But I do it as, as more of an online component as an extra education sort of stuff. Is that part of the PH360? Yeah, all part of that family. Okay. No, there's, I think there's PH360 physio, so that's different. Yep. So you, people explore that. They can get it on their own, do all the testing, but you find it a bit confronting. So it's more suitable to do with a, someone like yourself. 100%. So, yeah. How long does a consult take? Um, so I typically get people to measure themselves. We just set up a little process um, so they can do it when they're ready. But I did it with a lady on Tuesday uh, in person. It was about an hour. And she filled it out beforehand? She did it with me. 
Um, so she met us, she talked about it, typical guardian, uh, which I could tell before she did the test. It's like, I've been doing all the fitness stuff all my life. I've never changed my shape. This is nothing's ever worked. And I was just like, look, I can near guarantee that this process is going to just change your life and help you understand that there's a reason why those things didn't work and that you are different. And this approach will help you get that way. Interesting. It might be what my friend uses. Have you heard of Sean Tucker? No, because he talks about guardians and like, hmm. Um, it sounds like so dodgy, like boring. horoscope stuff, like yeah. woo woo. Like it's, it, and I think that's what makes it harder because, yeah, it just doesn't sound real, but it's, it's working. Yeah. I lost the weight. Yes. <laughs> it was the witchcraft, not yeah. the, not the epigenetics. Definitely not. It was my title of lifestyle training performance results epigenetics coach. Yes. <laughs> and so are you literally just sitting down with someone and you're like, tell me what you wish for. What is the outcome you desire with that wish? What obstacles do you perceive with that wish? And now let's make a plan. And you're like, not for initial. Initial, I just try and meet the person, understand the person, see what could be holding them back and see if the things that I can say to them sounds like relevant to them. And then I was like, if you can, like jump on board. Like I, I'm just so behind this program. Like it, the conviction is a killer. Well, okay. So like I'm a 40 year old, I work seven to seven, I'm tired, I've got two kids. Um, I like, I just, I've got a gut. I really just want to lose it and have more energy. Like, just, you know, most people, I'm, I'm sick of yeah. waking up tired. I train four or five times a week. Just don't seem to be getting anywhere. Um, and I heard you're the guy. Yeah. And so, like, yeah, this is my busty program. This is where you're going. Um, basically, so how we could help support you. It sounds like you've been through a lot. It sounds like nothing is working for you. Yeah. It sounds like you're ready to try something different. Is that correct? Yeah, that's why I came. Awesome. Um, so how it would work for you, I like, I honestly believe this program will help you so much. Like what we've seen in the past, we've had people exactly like you who have, you know, tried pretty much everything and it's worked for everyone else, but it's never necessarily worked for them or it has worked for them, but it hasn't lasted. And the issue is everyone thinks it's discipline. But what I like to think is you just haven't found what is right for you. So you haven't felt aligned. So you're constantly getting pulled away from what is right for you. So by doing this program, I know that we can help you feel more aligned. Um, weight loss definitely comes, but if we can get you feeling mentally and physically well and get your body moving, if your time allows it, then we can move you on the path. Uh, otherwise, you know, if you're not open-minded, if you're not willing to try something new, then this probably isn't for you. Well, I'm pretty closed off, so okay. Yeah, because yeah, there's no point, right? Like we've been training people for so long and if you're not willing to be a bit open-minded and change a few things and it's, it's just a waste of money and time what if um like the the post that's behind you like become what you think i think this might work let's give it a try so they're yeah, not practically everyone <laughs> yeah um and i tell them like look it sounds sounds weird it sounds skeptical it sounds bullshit but here's the results i've taken you know 60 people through i've only had three people who have been through who haven't really put in any action so the results they didn't see as much didn't put but, any action but they they could see the proof in the words that were written and they connected with the profile they just got stuck in their head and didn't take action so that was like three out of 60 which is pretty good stats compared to other things i've run <laughs> one of them probably had that but yeah so yeah like real a real identity crisis like i've been doing this for 10 years it hasn't worked here's something that sounds too easy. It can't be that simple. So I won't do it. And I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. The people just get stuck in their ways. Right. And it, it's funny. It shows, um, the hormone, the behavioral profile. You look at these type of people. Uh, so typically endomorphic people are past orientated. So they really focus on what's happened in the past. They can get really down and stuck. They're more susceptible to depression essentially. Um, so if they're in those states and feeling helpless and not wanting to put in the action, it makes it a lot harder to move them forward. Were those three people the same type? Uh, yes. <laughs> it's it's honestly the craziest blueprint and lens. that I knew you'd say that. Yeah, that's something a crusader would say. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yep. yep. You're not going to do this. And it becomes <laughs> funny that how that plays out and the jokes that the community have and like, yeah, the crusader is known as the one that's kind of status orientated as well so yeah it's it's fascinating so how you're the out. crusader not the crusader <laughs> not a crusader you're the crusader the best 
Yeah. Yep. So the, out in the world, there is a there is a good crusader, there's a better crusader, and then there's Josh, the best crusader. Yeah. So the, I guess the the tie into that is you know how there's so many growth based personal education things out there, and it's like you need to wake up at stupid hours in the morning. You need to do this. You need to do that. And once you put this lens on, you're like, this worked for them because they were that health type. If mm. I told someone who was endomorphic to get up at 4 a.m., go for a run, we would absolutely destroy their life. They, they would put on weight, they'd feel shit, their cortisol would spike through the roof, and they wouldn't be able to connect with the idea of hard work pays off. They want to be supported, they want to be nurtured, they want to still be strong and empowered, but mm. the crusader, which is kind of like the Western culture approach, can be really detrimental. Like if you go to some places in, I guess, not so much, not all of Europe, but like um, Italy and things like that. So they're more endomorphic. In the morning, there's no one around. You know, they're more later night our people. And biologically, they've realized that throughout life and they continue to be that way. What about, so like someone who's from Irish? Yep. And so, you know, you're saying they're the endomorph, they don't get up early in the morning, but however, they wake up in Ireland them waking up late is waking up early here like does look is it you know how does location versus you know upbringing birth play into that so it's still biological uh so you have your circadian rhythm that eventually aligns to whatever the, the sunlight and daylight's doing um so definitely putting that out of whack sucks um but you would resync if you're doing the right things at the right time so uh, you've got someone who has come to see you and you're, you're just basing it off the time zones that you're in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In terms of, so chronobiology, it's actually a huge part of it. I thought it was like just a little bit, um, effective, but in the last three weeks I've seen, it's really important in helping people, uh, just take it to the next level and get more results. Back to the case study. So, yeah. So like for the, like on the case study, you know, 40 year olds got the kids. So what, what are we doing now that we've agreed to do this? Yep. So the first week is like um, introduction to health types. So because it's so overwhelming, I realized you, you don't want to set up too much in the first week. It just becomes there's so much information and people will feel like they failed if you set direct goals in the first week and they don't do anything. Uh, so playing into that, just helping them, hey, build awareness. If you really need to do anything and everyone goes straight to food because everyone food and fitness, that's all we've been programmed which is really important for an activator, which is the fitness industry. So you have to battle that for a little bit while you're reintroducing these things to people. And essentially, once they've spent the time, I just check in with them midweek, hey, anything interesting you learned? And they're like, oh my God, this thing knows me. Like, how does it, how does it know these things? And I was just like, well, yeah, I guess the science is there, it's in your biology. Um, once we went through that, we'll catch up the next week, uh, for a like, 15 minute call, see how they're going and then set some mini goals around food. Uh, cause week two is food. So it's just a, it's a journey working through these areas. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the underlying theme does become fitness and food. Cause that's just, people don't want to let it go, which I understand. Um, they just think that's the key. Uh, and so week one health types, the reason I integrated other health types as well, I think the power of understanding seeing the things inside yourself, but then also seeing the people around you and seeing how you can find evidence to prove the system is real. It's just really empowering to connect the dots amongst other people as well. And it helps with relationships when people can understand people better too. And do you apply this much with your team? So like have you tested your whole PT team? I've tested my whole team. Uh, it turns out they're mostly, um, yeah, guardians and diplomats apart from me and Elise. So I'm the only crusader in my gym. Funny enough, mm, status. And, mm, yeah, all status. the other crusaders have been kicked out. No, they're doing off more, um, more dopamine-driven things, like probably tracking themselves, running certain distances, and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, Elise is an activator, almost connector, and it speaks to the role she's in as well. So she loves connecting with people, yeah, sales and yep. yeah, and she's really good. Um, yeah, just being out and energetic with people. And then our other newest coach, Maddie, she's also very close to Elise on the circle and the behaviors are so similar. So it's it's incredible to see. And then our other coaches, like I said, guardian diplomats, they're definitely more nurturing, more family-based and it works perfect uh, for our community environment.
tested on your team. They've all gone through it. Then the journey of someone who's wanting to do this, you go, first one is health type, understand self. Week two is nutrition. Yep. Week three. Yep. So week three is the chronobiology and environment. Yep. Four. Week four is, you got me here, I think it's mind. Yeah, so understanding the mind. I wouldn't know. So you could be like, thank yeah. you. <laughs> um, and yeah, because I've got my answers here. I know. The five, you're reevaluating it all? Yeah, sorry. So mind and communication was week four. Week five is reset and goal setting. Does, so you just like redo week one to check? Uh, in terms of the reset? Yeah, so like can someone be a crusader and then when you reset you're like oh, oh yeah, I'm no you, like the, you will only change like five to ten degrees on the circle so most of the measurements are musculoskeletal based right so your bone structure isn't going to change unless you're taking growth hormones um hmm. so yeah you like elise switched over for a little bit into the connector and then she changed her body a little bit and she went back to the activator <laughs> Took some growth hormone. <laughs> nice. Maybe maybe trained a little bit and a body shape changed a little bit, but yeah. Yeah, okay. And then week six? Yep, week six, uh, which I've got quite a few people doing at the moment, is stress and genius. Um, so four stress and six are genius. stress and genius. So it's actually, those are my two favorite weeks, week four and six. Uh, and it speaks to my health type as well because my number one lifestyle priority is mine. So mindset, all those things related to that. And then um, having a purpose. So my number one lifestyle priority is purpose. So if you can understand your mind, you're going to work more effectively. And then if you can learn how to navigate stress, you're going to be more resilient. Um, and then genius is figuring out what's going to be the best for you to support your natural genius in workplaces. We spend upwards of 40 hours a week doing the work thing. So imagine if you did it with something you're actually good at. And a lot of people had a lot of revelations going through week six. Yeah, well, has anyone quit their job yet? Yeah, no, super big science, understanding that it just wasn't playing into their health. Um, and that's part of the journey as well, right? So some people, like level one is like awareness, level two is like make some changes, level three is like, no, I'm this way, I'm just going to stay this way, like, rah. But you can overcome, like when you build awareness even further, you can overcome some of those said behaviors. So then that's the next step, overcoming them and then trying to be fully aligned. Um, and I think that's how the program mainly developed the guy. Who was the founder? He was meant to like pass away in 2007 or something. Got a dangerous illness, and he just went on this big journey journey to understand epigenetics and lifestyle factors and things like that. And he's still alive today, and he's incredible what he does around the world. Wow. Week seven. Week seven, we have I think it's love, uh, social and love languages. Yeah. Eight. And week eight is fitness. And the reason I did that is in case people freak out and think they're not meant to train here because it says that, but ultimately strength training is foundationally good for everyone. So, And so it's just an eight-week program? Yeah. Yeah, we go through the eight weeks. Um, and then if anyone's interested, we can continue coaching. For those people who need to lose more weight, like I'm going to suggest like, hey, you haven't done it before. It's going to take this long. We need to keep going. And yeah, we'll do that. And so based off the eight weeks, you're then just evaluating where they're at. So someone who needs more fitness guidance than you're recommending them to coaches to continue. For someone who's on the nutrition side, nutrition. Someone's love and connection, you're referring them out to love love coach. Yeah, I mean, I can do all those things, but if oh, I, if love anyone, coach, no? <laughs> not necessarily love coach. I, the, the typical problem with the crusader is they focus on one thing, they like the blinders on, so relationships definitely take a bit of a hit with that there is a thing called a relationship coach and there is someone yep. out there who's an expert love coach love coaching and a love life coach yeah, yeah definitely we used to have a client here that did a um a workshop for people and it was it was really good people could connect with it so yeah well, yeah be anything coach you can yep yeah well. And that's epigenetics. Is there anything else people should know about epigenetics? I, I, I honestly think it'll be the future. If it's not integrated into everything in the next 15 years, I think it should be faster. But I just think that... that like a hurdle... decade? You know, like when AI said it would fully integrate and take over <laughs> health and wellness, you think it would take a decade? Yeah. It, it just makes sense, right? Like if you have this lens to understand the world better um, in every area because it's so holistic, then it's, it's a shortcut. It's a blueprint. It's powerful. Yeah, wow. Incredible. And if someone wants to understand the epigenetics world, wants to connect, uh, so we've got Shea Wellness. 
or they can reach out to you to do one-to-one or group? Yep, for sure. So Josh underscore think fit um, and they can have a chat with me. It's nothing pushy. Like I just want to work with people who do want to make changes. I'm sick of having, like we've been working with people for so long that don't. Um, but the power of this and what we're seeing, we're just changing lives consistently. Well, if you're interested in joining me on an epigenetic journey, I will be chatting with Josh more about this. Then reach out to Josh and he will help you with your epigenetics, your phenotype, and then your health type uh, in an eight-week journey to understand if you should be eating broccoli or not. <laughs> Till next time. Josh, been a pleasure. Hey guys, thanks for tuning into that episode. I hope you really enjoyed it. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel and also to share so we can help more people. Now with your pen, you've probably written down heaps of things, but the things like myself, like there's blank pages, but pages got lots of notes. What are the top three that you got out of today's episode? If three is too much, action on one thing and just see how it goes for you for this week. And make amendments and adjustments so you're constantly improving and refining it and moving forward in your health, your training, your life. If you ever get stuck, reach out to us at info at Always hit help. Till next time, adios, amigos.